Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The bats of the order Chiroptera occupy an important place in many cultures, which is not at all surprising given their highly distinctive appearance and behaviour, being the only mammals to have evolved powered flight. With a range of attributes including membranous wings supported by five greatly elongated fingers, mostly nocturnal lifestyles, and the presence of well-developed echolocation in many species, bats have flown their way into the human psyche. While in China and India, these animals are largely regarded in a positive manner. In broader Western culture, bats are often viewed as sinister, being associated with evil, vampires, and the horror genre as a whole, which was the main reason for me making this video so close to Halloween, where the flying mammals feature heavily in decoration. Such negative associations are quite old, dating back to the 14th century in Europe, where many nocturnal animals were seen as being connected to the devil, including nightjars and owls, the latter of which have shaken off their ominous reputation in modern times, and are now thought of as often wise and even cute. I personally find many bat species to be quite adorable as well, but I'm not sure how widespread this opinion is. Regardless of how they are depicted in human cultures, bats are an incredibly successful group of animals, comprising about 20% of all mammal species, and inhabiting a wide range of body sizes and niches, from tiny insectivores comparable to the smallest shrews, to frugivores with wingspans almost six feet across. They are found on all continents except Antarctica, and live in a wide range of ecosystems, from tropical forests to deserts. However, despite their wide range and success today, bats have a pretty poor fossil record, which is not surprising given their delicate, lightweight skeletons. The oldest known members of Chiroptera first appear around the time of the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, circa 55 to 56 million years ago, with the genera Archaeonycteris and Altynycteris being known from Eurasia, although these are only represented by fossilized teeth. Based on morphological evidence, it was traditionally thought that bats were close relatives of tree shrews, colugos, and primates which does make sense given that all of these animals are strong climbers, native to tropical forests. Indeed, the gliding colugos do look superficially similar to the large flying fox bats, and were suggested to resemble the presumed gliding ancestors of Chiroptera. However, with the advent of genetic testing in the 1990s, bats have been unambiguously placed within Laurasiatheria instead which is the super successful mammal lineage that contains the insectivorous shrews, moles, and hedgehogs of Eulipotifla, as well as the carnivorans, pangolins, and ungulates. Recent studies have suggested that bats are part of a broader group known as Apochiroptera, which may also include several genera of small insectivorous mammals from the Paleocene and early Eocene, such as Eosericodon and Wyonycteris microtis. Again, these are only known from teeth and jaw fragments, which doesn't tell us anything about their general morphology, other than that their teeth were pretty well adapted for consuming small insects and other invertebrate prey. It is presumed that early protobats were arboreal nocturnal insectivores that were initially gliding animals that leapt from tree to tree, although exactly how and why they developed powered flight is still not well understood. By the early Eocene circa 52 million years ago, the first complete bat fossils turn up in the fossil record, which are mostly preserved in Lagerstarter deposits. At this time, bats had already achieved a very wide range, spreading out from their presumed Eurasian origins into North America, Africa, and even Australasia. Two of the best known forms are Onychonycteris and Icaronycteris, which were found in lake deposits of the Green River Formation in North America. Both of these would have already looked very much like small modern bats, being capable of powered flight and possessing prominent wings. The former genus was among the most basal members of Chiroptera, and possessed several primitive traits not seen in living bats, including a relatively long tail, claws on all five digits of the forelimbs, instead of just two or three seen in modern forms, as well as shorter wings and longer hind legs. It was also not as well adapted for sustained powered flight having a form of aerial locomotion described as alternating between fluttering and gliding. In addition, it is currently unknown if Onychonycteris was capable of echolocation, due to the flattened nature of its fossils, leaving the origins of this characteristic bat ability somewhat mysterious. It is possible that some weakly developed form of echolocation was present in protobats, 
which may have been nocturnal insectivores, modern shrews are also capable of this to an extent, utilising simple echolocation in order to help these animals orientate themselves. While a small mammal, weighing an estimated 40 grams, Ornithonycteris was still larger than most modern bats, which have a median mass of about 12 grams, suggesting that Chiropterans generally shrank over time. Multiple species have been recovered from the Green River Formation, including the closely related Icaronycteris gunnelli. This animal measured about 5.5 inches long and had a wingspan of roughly 15 inches. It closely resembled modern bats, but had some primitive traits. For one, the tail was much longer and not connected to the hind limbs via a skin membrane, while the first wing finger bore a claw and the body was more flexible. Similarly, it had a full set of relatively unspecialized teeth, similar to those of a modern shrew. Its anatomy suggests that, like modern bats, Icaronycteris slept while hanging upside down, holding onto a tree branch with its hind legs. Many other fossil Eocene bats have been proposed as species of Icaronycteris, although these are now thought to be members of their own genera. Other Eocene stem bats include Australonycteris, which is known from the early Eocene Mergon site of Queensland, Australia, and dates to roughly 54 million years ago. This makes the genus the oldest bat from the Southern Hemisphere, in addition to being among the oldest of all Chiropterans showing just how quickly these animals were able to spread almost worldwide. It is known only from fragmentary remains including several teeth, a section of lower jaw, as well as some postcranial elements, although these are enough to demonstrate that Australonycteris was fully capable of both flight and echolocation. It probably would have resembled modern microbats, with teeth that are well adapted for piercing the shells of insects such as beetles. Other bats of the early Eocene include Paleochiropteryx, from the famous Messel site located in central Germany. Around 48 million years ago, this region was covered by humid subtropical forests that surrounded a series of large freshwater lakes. Messel absolutely teemed with ancient life, including tiny rabbit-sized artiodactyls, early arboreal primates, and giant flightless birds of the genus Gastornis. Like many of the other species present at the site, the remains of Paleochiropteryx were preserved in wonderful detail often preserving the furry outline of the animal, even including the ears. Its wings were fairly short and rounded, indicating an adaptation for slow but highly manoeuvrable flight beneath forest canopies and among dense vegetation. Preserved summit contents show that this bat fed on moths and caddis flies, flying relatively close to the ground. Analysis of its skull indicates that Paleochiropteryx possessed enlarged cochleae relative to its body size, albeit proportionally smaller than those in modern microbats, suggesting that it was certainly capable of echolocation. We also know that this genus was reddish-brown in life, due to the study of preserved melanosomes in its fossils. The lineage that led to all modern bats is thought to have diverged during the late Paleocene or early Eocene, although their remains do not become identifiable until later in the period. In 2023, a close relative of modern species was named based on near-complete three-dimensionally preserved skull found in a cave in the Quercy Phosphorites of southwestern France. Dating to about 50 million years ago, this was the genus Vialacea, which was recovered as the sister taxon to all living Chiropterans, as well as representing the earliest known example of a cave-living bat. Vialacea retained the archaic dentition and skeletal feature typical of early Eocene bats, but its inner ear shows specializations found in modern echolocating species. At least 23 individuals of the genus were found preserved together in limestone cave deposits, showing that they roosted together in large social groups. The lineage that led to modern crown group bats is thought to have diverged at some point during the Paleocene, although exactly when is still debated. In the scientific papers used in my research, a date of roughly 60 million years ago appears to be the closest thing to an average figure. From here, the two major living bat clades would emerge, with these being the Yangochiroptera and the Yinterochiroptera. Although there are so many species of these, that they will have to wait for a future video. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next episode will be covering the early evolutionary history of the monotremes, one of my favourite mammal groups. Until then, enjoy the spooky season, and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.